We're driving to Green Bank, West Virginia, and the radio just went out. I lost cell phone service, no Wi-Fi, and that's because we just entered the National Radio Quiet Zone. It's been called the quietest place in America. There are no cell phone towers. Wi-Fi is highly restricted. Microwaves, too. The U.S. National Radio Quiet Zone, a 13,000 square mile area, was established in 1958 to protect telescopes like these from electromagnetic frequencies that could cause harmful interference. We went 450 feet up to the very top of the world's largest steerable radio telescope in Green Bank, West Virginia. Being up here, I feel like a speck on the earth. What it's used for really makes me feel like a speck on the earth, because it's used by scientists to study things that are going on very far out in the universe. Uh, stars that are being formed or stars that are dying, uh, galaxies and, and their collisions. People have looked for life using this telescope. What, what makes this particular telescope unique? Yeah, what makes it unique is, for one thing, its location. It's in the National Radio Quiet Zone. And so we're free from a lot of the man-made interference that would really block uh, study of sensitive signals. I mean, the, the tiniest little transmitter, even things like cell phones or even the kind of transmitters that are in your digital camera would wipe out the signals. Another thing is its sheer size. It's a very good, very precise tracking instrument. So a lot of things put together make it an absolute unique instrument for the study of a large range of phenomena out there in the universe. Do some people feel as if they're living in a little bubble here? I mean, in a sense, I feel like I'm living in a little wonderland <laughs> because we have this great science going on here. And I suppose there are people that can't imagine doing without cellular service. But for most of human history, <laughs> you know, we managed quite well. Uh, think of it as, as living in 1980. I love the 80s. Well, the fashions left something to be desired. <laughs> <laughs> Jonah Bowserman patrols the 10-mile radius around the National Radio Astronomy Observatory to make sure there are no electromagnetic frequencies that might interfere with the telescopes. This is actually NRAO property. Uh, you know, the folks that live here sign a rental agreement, and it basically says you are not allowed to have microwave ovens, uh, Wi-Fi, cordless telephones, anything that could transmit a signal um, is, is strictly forbidden. So no lean cuisines for these guys for dinner? Nope. Uh, or they have to figure out another alternative to cook it. I mean, it does seem in some ways that this town is kind of from a different era. It is a unique area. Um, we're, we're kind of locked back in time, if you will. The National Radio Quiet Zone is not only a place of scientific research and discovery, it's become a haven of sorts for people who believe they suffer from a condition known as electromagnetic hypersensitivity, that electromagnetic fields make them sick. I got a headache that was like a sledgehammer on the head. I started losing weight really fast. I got, you know, emaciated. The doctors were really frightened. They thought maybe I had cancer. You know, I was very nauseous. I was throwing up all the time. Every moment of every day was absolute torture. Diane Scow, Jennifer Wood, and Melissa Calmers are among the few dozen people who have moved to Green Bank in the last few years to try to escape the ever-growing reach of Wi-Fi technology. Well, what sorts of things were making you sick? Well, originally it was just the cell phone tower that was near my home, but after that became cell phones. And eventually it also morphed into uh, power lines electrical uh, devices, fluorescent lights are horrible. The electricity became so um, painful that when the neighbor ran her coffee maker, I was in such pain, it was such a headache, and all that really hurt. When I was using the phone, after a couple of minutes, I would start getting numb on this side of my face, and so I would turn it off. <laughs> but then the last time I used it, uh, my face went numb for two weeks. A lot of houses I can't even be in, so this is why I built, hand-built my own house with no electricity. There are some people who say that what you're suffering from is not a condition, it's an affliction, it's in your head. How does that make you feel? They're uneducated, they are closed-minded, and they are selfish. It is real, it is true. How did you feel when you arrived in this quiet zone? Uh, I felt great, actually. You know, at one point my whole body just relaxed. By getting away, I was able to recover. I do have electricity in my home. I use it carefully. So therefore, I do have a computer. I can go to the local grocery store, I can go to church, I can be with people, and they're not carrying a cell phone in their pocket. 
As soon as I moved and I was completely out of all electrical fields and all cell phone reception, within two weeks I noticed I was already gaining weight. It took a couple days for the ringing in my ears to stop here. And after, after two days, I never wanted to leave. There's no other place I like it that I've seen. But as technology continues to creep in, things may be getting a little louder in the quiet zone. We've got quite a few uh, Wi-Fi modems here in the area. These could potentially cause harmful radio frequency interference to the telescope. I would say there's probably uh, maybe 40, maybe 50 uh, Wi-Fi modems uh, just driving through the town of Greenbank. Wow. That's a lot of Wi-Fi for the town that's not supposed to have any Wi-Fi. It's a little bit disheartening, but it is what it is, I suppose. Even though they're not supposed to, people here are accessing things such as wireless technology. And so you have to wonder, how long can this place truly remain a quiet zone? I think eventually this zone will be threatened. People are going to want to use the technology because they want to use it. I don't know what I'll do. Yeah, the, the type of science that we're doing here, you know, is not just for right here, right now, uh, in this day and time. It's for the next generation. The universe is vast, it's huge, it's, it's magnificent. And, you know, to be able to take a tool like this and look back through time uh, is just astounding to me. To see what efforts are underway to provide internet access to the entire world, check out this episode of D News. Obviously, there are some inherent challenges to using balloons. Early tests had helium leaks, which brought the balloons back down to Earth after just a day or two. Current R&D is focused on keeping balloons up for more than 100 days, and it's going pretty well. Thanks for watching, and please subscribe so you can see new videos every week.